In this video, let's discuss how to use return to libc technique to bypass NX protection. Since the stack is not executable, we won't be able to execute shell code that we place on the stack. So we will have to go with another approach which will execute a command of our choice. In our case, we want to execute binsh and if we can pass this binsh to a function like system, it will be executed for us. Now the question is, where can we find the function system? It will be available in the libc library. libc is loaded into most of the applications and thus even our vulnerable application loads libc. Now to put it in simple words, our vulnerable application loads libc library. So using the control we have on the stack, we can call system function from libc and we will pass the string binsh as an argument so that binsh will be executed by the system function and we will get a shell. Before we execute this attack, let's understand how system function works. So we are going to do that by writing a very simple C program. Let's switch to our virtual machine and let's create a new directory called return to libc. I just call it ret to libc and let's navigate to this new directory and let's create a simple C program and let's name it system.c. Hash include stdlib.h int main and let's close the curly brackets and let's use system function to execute binsh so that we will get a shell. All right, so this is the program. Now let's compile this using GCC. So I'm just saving the file and let's use GCC system.c-o system. This is going to be the output file. There it is. Looks like we have compiled it. Now let's quickly check if we get a shell by executing this binary. Look at that, we got a shell by executing this simple binary with system function. Now let's exit and let's load this binary in GDB by using GDB space dot slash system. And let's disassemble the main function. All right, so if you notice, there is a call to system function here at this address and just before this call instruction there is an instruction which makes it pretty clear that something is being saved in RDI register you can see that here the address from which the data is referenced is shown in the comments here by GDB so let's examine this particular address and see what's there so I'm just typing x slash s and let's copy this address and let's paste it here and look at that as we can see here it is the binsh string that is being loaded into the rdi register just before the function call to the system as mentioned earlier intel 64-bit processors pass the first argument to the function using the RDI register. We can also step through these instructions and see what's being placed in the RDI register at runtime. So let's type SI. Let's type B space main so that we can set up a breakpoint at main. And let's type run. Now let's type SI. Let's type SI once again, one more SI. Now, if you see this, this instruction is being executed. As you can see here, after executing this next instruction, 
something is going to be placed in this RDI register right so if you check the contents of RDI register at this particular point of time it just contains the value hex 1 so let's type SI and let's check the value of RDI once again and look at that it contains some address which is actually pointing to this value let's quickly check what this value is I'm just copying this and let's open up a new tab and let's type echo and let's use a hex editor with dash r dash p options and look at that this is the slash bin slash sh string that we have seen earlier the string slash bin slash sh appears in reverse due to the little indian format used by the intel processors so essentially we are going to use the same technique when we write our exploit using return to libc technique we shall place the argument to the system function in the rdi register and we can overwrite the saved return address with a gadget that pops a value from the top of the stack into the RDI register and immediately after that instruction we will place a pointer to bin sh string finally we will place a pointer to the address of system function which will execute bin sh because it is already placed in the RDI register now let's quickly take a pictorial representation of how our stack is going to look like in our exploit as you can see here in this picture we are going to fill in the buffer with some junk to start with until we reach the RIP register which contains the saved return address and when we reach this saved return address we are going to overwrite it with a gadget that pops a value from the top of the stack and this value that is being popped from the top of the stack is going to be a pointer to bin sh string from libc after that we place a pointer to system function from libc so our first objective before writing this exploit is to find out the address of system function and the offset of slash bin slash sh string from the libc library after placing the pointer to the system on the stack we will have to overwrite the next six bytes with a pointer to exit function because once the system function completes its execution the address of this exit function becomes the next instruction to be executed and we will exit gracefully so we will have to find out the addresses of system exit and bin sh in libc so let's start writing this exploit